Petoskey or Harbor Springs or Roger City or Traverse City. You know, the, the importance of infrastructure to make sure that the lake and bay is, are clean is very, 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 very critical. We want to protect those, but it, what the quarrel that we find, and, and mm -hmm. oftentimes in northern Michigan, is we don't want to see sprawl. Right. And, right. and, and yet, you can replace them in mm -hmm. areas like yours, right. uh, the, the historic neighborhoods. Right. It isn't going to increase sprawl. It is going to protect the environment. Right. It is going right. to protect the citizens. Right. And it is good public right. policy because if we have a quality infrastructure, whether it is above ground mm -hmm. or below ground, right. that, that stuff unseen, it is going to attract tourism. It is going to attract new business. It is going to attract new jobs. So right. it's important right. overall. Okay, so we talked about sort of the roads, and we've now talked about sort of sewer and water infrastructure. Then we go into sort of some of the other areas that may not get as much uh, light because of the, that we're not as heavy in these areas. But rail infrastructure up north, and I got to believe throughout the state, is that something you guys are working on, or what are the types of things you're doing there? You know, rail infrastructure, uh, the the ports that mm -hmm. we have that are so important across the state. We are interested in a multimodal system, mm -hmm. meaning all modes working mm -hmm. together. The trucks take the stuff from the port, they move it over, they put it on the rails. It, it, it's all interconnected and very important to the vitality of, of Michigan's right. economic future. We believe that there are opportunities to improve our rail okay. system. I think it's been an area that has lacked focus okay. in, in recent years. Okay. Um, same with the ports. We have run into numerous scenarios particularly along the Michigan or Lake Michigan mm -hmm. border uh, uh, of ports not having adequate funding to uh, uh, dig out the, um, the uh, sand and right. whatnot in the lake right. to attract the boats in that we need to move aggregate, coal, some heavy products. Right. And, and so we've got to stay focused on that because it is having an impact well, on our Well, you take a look at Sault Ste. Marie. And yes. that is a huge infrastructure project if that goes. Yes. I mean, so that's a, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars because that super lock is invaluable for commerce of moving the aggregates or the steel. And, and so those are the types of things that, that you know, you, you always think of that we've got to be working on that are long-term investments, which is how you guys have been good stewards of, of things. Well, and we appreciate that. The, the, the lock in, in Sault Ste. Marie is a perfect example of how Michigan could prosper if we invest adequately. We need help on that type of project from the federal government. Uh, Michigan isn't going to solve that problem ourselves. We need to take a look long term at, at uh, lobbying Washington, taking care of putting our own house in order as well, working together to find solutions to help Michigan move forward. Okay, so, so we have the sort of talked about the different areas. The next is, is then sort of what are the um, the ratios that come back from Washington. I know when we worked with Congressman Camp, he was very proud that we were like running in the 90 cent area on roads. Do you have any idea sort of on those, uh, how that works on the federal on the roads? And then what do we get on sort of the port component? What do we get on airports? Because I assume you guys do airport <laughs> infrastructure. You know, it, we do. Um, we're involved in actually. And how does that work? Is it ice? I heard it was called ice tea. Is that right? Right now, it's safe tea, Lou. Okay. Ice tea. Ice tea was our our authorization process from a couple years, years ago. ago. Okay. Yeah, but uh, the current one is safe tea, Lou. Okay. Um, and on roads and bridges, we get about ninety two cents for every dollar we send to Washington, which seems great. There are states that are receiving well over four dollars for every wow. dollar they send to Washington, wow. and wouldn't that be nice? Right. We got to get uh, Congress to come have a right. visit here in Michigan right. because we certainly need help. Right. Um, the ninety-two cents on the dollar, we leave eight cents for every dollar in Washington. It goes to those other states. Mm -hmm. On transit, we're we're really far behind. Uh, so, is it fair to speculate? I've heard numbers from any place for every dollar we send, we get between twenty-five and forty cents back. Correct, and it's it's sad. It's going to to states like New York. Right. They have a, a huge subway system. Uh, so all rail. that expansion. So we're Michigan citizens are paying for those expansions. Yeah, we talk about rail quite a bit here. Mm -hmm. Passenger movement sure. here in Michigan, uh, light rail, that mm -hmm. type of thing. We don't really have a system in place to attract those dollars right. out of Washington. It's focused on those areas right. that already have light okay. rail. Along the East Coast is big on that. Um, in, in California, they have a, a large wide transit system that is collecting a lot of money out of Washington. 
ultimately we need to do a better job of putting the plans in place mm -hmm. to, to try to grab some of that money. On the port side, on the airport side, I think we're doing okay to put that into perspective of the dollars. I, I don't have those uh, statistics okay. with me right now. I know that in the recent uh, federal uh, transportation money that came on airports, mm -hmm. we did pretty good. And there were a number of projects right. up in northern right. Michigan that did w were able right. to tap into the money. So right. our members do do that type of work. They're laying the runways. They're, they're helping to uh, improve that network, but there's a lot of work still needed there as well. I was talking to Airport Commissioner Kotanch and uh, Inman the other day, and they were talking about sort of when they're doing runway expansions, the amount of infrastructure underneath that has to go in. Mm -hmm. And between the wiring, between the regrading of those, uh, it, it's amazing. And, and I'm sure you've got skill sets in that area too. We do. We, we actually represent most of the electrical contractors involved in that scope of work. Wow. Uh, and it is. It's, it's a big segment of, of the industry that maybe people don't recognize. Mm -hmm. But when you're flying in on a plane and you see right. all those lights yeah. and, and all those uh, issues that they have to take into uh, consideration on an airport, it isn't just a big piece of pavement right. that they're landing on. Again, though, the pavement is different there than pro probably a really? road. Just because it has to be that much thicker, they can't have the uh, concrete sitting up when a plane's coming down into okay. it, obviously. So it, they put in a deeper base, okay. they put in thicker concrete, and so it's more costly okay. for them. Very good. Okay, so now the, we've talked a little bit about the, the money component, which was this, what do you call it? T, T what? Safety Lou. Safety yeah. Lou, okay. Yeah. Very good. So then on top of this, there's the federal stimulus dollars. Yes, yes. So, so how is that all? What are the pots of money, and what what should our listeners be, you know, either disappointed at? I heard we were a donor state again on this issue and roads yes. on the on the the, the, uh, the safety or the infrastructure. I would, I would say that we were probably in the top ten in terms of overall take and okay. our stimulus money. I really can only associate it with the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. There are obviously a lot of other social programs that are receiving sure. money, uh, Medicaid, Medicare, those type of issues that will, our state will benefit from. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the infrastructure side, we're looking at somewhere between 1.1 billion and 1.5 billion in overall infrastructure money coming into the state. Nothing to scoff at. It will put people to work. We estimate that the infrastructure money coming in for roads, bridges, sewers, some airport money, maybe some port money, uh, distribution of, of uh, cable and, and other things to update our state, uh, some electrical work. It could put uh, as many as 20 to 30,000 wow. individuals to work. Wow. Now, that isn't just new jobs. It's, okay. it's creating and maintaining. The, the president said that several times. Uh, we continue to say it because there are people working in our industry that may be laid off in the future mm -hmm. if we continue our, our downhill trend in terms of infrastructure spending. Mm -hmm. But this money will help sustain us for a while. Okay. We are happy to start turning dirt. Yeah. Our members are encouraged yeah. by it. Their employees are, are ready to, to get to work this spring and summer. MDOT, the local agencies, have done a wonderful job of putting this together. Uh, you have some, some great offices up there in your neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. the, the, the road commissions up there, the MDOT personnel up there have done a wonderful job of making sure that we grab every single right. dollar possible out right. of the stimulus package. And, and sort of the roads, how do you think that money is going to be allocated? Because, you know, I've seen, like, the city of Traverse City came up with a whole litany of things. The city of Charlotte, I mean, I, Chippewa County, Chippewa County Road Commission. Yeah. I mean, I, I can go through every one of my local units of government. Yeah. We've got literally hundreds of millions of dollars worth of requests. How do you, do you any idea how that's going to get? Let me put it into perspective. We are getting about $1.5 billion for infrastructure okay. with the locals putting together their list from all across the yeah. state, all of yeah. those that you mentioned, the grand total came up to $59 billion, this big Christmas tree wish list. So it, I had heard it was huge, but I didn't realize it was that $59 big. $59 billion. So you're probably 1% of all the requests are going to get funded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we aren't able to tackle, right. because that doesn't even include MDOT's wish list. I mean, sure. the, the, the routes that people would like to see right. finished, 131 uh, continuing up north. Right. Um, those type of routes aren't even on there. We aren't doing new construction with this. It, the, we've done a nice job of putting it together, a list to fix what we have. We aren't trying to create a whole bunch right. of new roads here. Uh, but in the end, the $59 billion is the local list, 
and then you add MDOT onto that, we have some significant okay. needs left okay. undone here in Michigan. 